Hi, good morning to everyone. Happy to meet you once again on this platform. Today, let us study an essay. It is by Francis Bacon. I don't think many of you have heard of him. He was from 1561 to 1626. Very old in a way. But during the time of William Shakespeare, the greatest of all literary geniuses. Yes, you know, Shakespeare and his dramas. Nobody can even now excel him. Even George Bernard Shaw is known as or named as next only to Shakespeare. So, Bacon was in a way contemporary of William Shakespeare. There were many literary greats during that time. It is of period. It is not a Shakespearean period also. But still, so great is his, are his essays. So great is him and so great are his essays. And he is known as the father of English essays. Yes. So he was a philosopher and a pioneer of modern scientific thought. He was a great philosopher. So his essays contain some wonderful ideas. You have to think a lot to understand. Though language is simple, I repeat, the language is simple. Lofty thoughts. High ideas. You have to think, you have to use your brain to understand what he really means. It is not simple essays. Not an easy task to understand him. But you have to use your brain to understand his essays, the greatest of all essays. Francis Bacon. I repeat once again, a philosopher and pioneer of modern scientific thought. Yes, he was a pioneer, a champion of a scientific thought. Thinking scientifically, even in your thoughts, you can think scientifically, systematically. Yes. So, such kind of a great essayist, Francis Bacon, and his essay of studies. So, we are to study, we are going to study, we are going to see an essay by Francis Bacon of studies. Study is not just meant for the study that you make in the class. No, it is in general sense. It can be what you study in the class, what you learn, what you understand, what you read, what you write, the knowledge all together. That is what study means. So not just what you study in the class. So it can be the knowledge you acquire, you have acquired and all those things together. That is what he means when he says study. Yes, we are going to see an essay of studies by Francis Bacon. In this essay, he speaks elaborately of studies. You see, what is the meaning of it, the benefits and all those things. So, Francis Bacon speaks elaborately on studies. Okay, now, let us see what he means when he says studies. Let us begin. Okay, now, the lesson, the essay of studies by Francis Bacon. Okay. The first line of the essay. Studies serve for delight, for ornament and for ability. Think of what is being told. Studies serve for delight 
I repeat, study doesn't mean what you study in the class. The knowledge you acquire, you have acquired by many ways. By reading, writing, listening, observing others and getting lessons from them. All together, generally reading and study. Okay. The education, the knowledge. Yes. Study serve for delight, for ornament and for ability. Remember three words. I mean, they serve for the purpose of study. Three things. What are they? Delight, ornament and for ability. Let us see what is meant by all the three words. Repeat once again. I repeat once again for you to remember. Study serve for delight, ornament and for ability. Yes, the chief use for delight is in privateness and retiring. How it is meant for delight? How it serves for delight? It is in privateness and retiring. You can read the dramas of Shakespeare, the poems of Wordsworth or whatever in private and enjoy it. And enjoy it. Is it not so? Whether it's essay or poem or drama or any form of art. They are all forms of art. What's the purpose of art? Whether it is a drama, dance, you know, whatever be. All art forms. Art. What's the purpose of it? Just to think. What's the purpose of an art? Art form. Basically, primarily, it is meant to educate. Yes, it should give you something, some knowledge. Is it not so? But which you have, you have not heard before or you don't know. The first purpose of it is giving education. You should know something new. Then, enjoyment. Two things should be there in any form of art. First to educate, then to enjoy, entertain. That should be there in any form of art. Otherwise, it won't be art. Where is essay? When you read an essay, you think deep and your mind will be made happy. When you watch a movie or when you see a drama, when you read a story, when you read a novel, what happens? You forget about your problems, sorrows and suffering and think about all these things and you feel that your mind is made happy. You feel cheerful. Okay, na? So education and enjoyment both should be there. In any form of art, literature, whatever be, literature, poem, whatever be, essay, whatever be. So that you can do in private. Means alone, at home, in the room, wherever be you are, when you feel uh, tired and boring, you take a book and read it and get the ideas in it. Yes, then you feel happy. The real happiness, your mind feels happy and cheerful. That's what? Yes. In privateness and retiring, there is a chief delight of study that you can do in private and retiring. Means alone you can read yourself and enjoy and understand. See, every idea will make your mind broadened. Your narrow mindedness will be gone. <clears throat> Is it not so? You get more ideas, more knowledge, more education. What happens? Your mind becomes broad and I mean broad mindedness you get. Many of the I mean um, uh, prejudices and old beliefs slowly will be fading or it will wither away. Move out from your mind and your mind becomes broad and that's what every idea Every new uh, knowledge that will make your mind broaden, not your body, but your mind, 
becomes broad broad and broad minded and narrow mindedness will be gone that education you can get in private that knowledge you can acquire in private the deep purpose of study what is that once again read read once again for ornament and for ability the chief purpose of study is for ornament oh, sorry for delight ornament and for ability delight in the sense the chief use for delight is in privateness yes it can be done in private okay for ornament is the discourse ornament how you can ornament yourself is in the discourse debate and talking a man of knowledge one who is educated one who knows the subject matter whatever be see his discourse means his debate his discussion his talking will be different from an illiterate man who has not studied who has not learned who doesn't read any book at all see his language will be decorated ornamented look at that you can understand a man's knowledge when he speaks something the method he speaks the language he i mean uses and the ideas he i mean introduces the systematic way of introduction if if it is talking debate or whatever be his language will be ornamented his language will be decorated that's what second use of study what is it once again read that yes the chief use for delight is in privateness and retiring for ornament is in discourse yes ornament you can ornament your language using your study okay okay na and for ability is sir in the judgment and disposition of business disposition of business managing things dealing things disposition of business that is for ability a man of knowledge will be able to do things in a better way is it not so so you look at our administrative system who is a real person who are the people who do this administrative activities ias ips and ifs they are experts in that matter is it not so yes managing things they know better because they are well trained well educated that is what you see see once again ah uh, and for ability is in the judgment they can judge better evaluate better they are better equipped i mean uh, enabled enabled this study will enable them to judge better judgment and uh, disposition of business managing business arranging things in the order is it not so yes they are able to do things in a better way than others especially those who are not educated so the first line is in a way most important of this essay have you understood it is not so easy i repeat not so easy the chief purposes of study study is there for delight for ornament and for ability how you don't understand how it is so i repeat once again they are there for delight for ornament and for ability the chief use for delight is in privateness and retiring study can be done in private when you retire from your day to day activities and do something in private then ornament is in discourse so your language will be ornamented decorated if you must a studied man man of knowledge man of education your language will be ornamented decorated your debate your discussion your talking everything is will be different from one who is not that's what yes ornament is in the discourse and for ability third use ability how is that in the judgment a man of knowledge a man of education when he is studied when he is educated he will be able to judge better he is in judgment and disposition of business 
he will be able to manage business means any activity in a better way because he is educated he is well studied he is able to do that so three use of study remember once again all of you can remember just remember it what are they delight ornament and for ability yes you can note it that the first line is the most important line of this essay of studies francis bacon says that uh, studies serve for delight ornament and for ability how do they serve for delight ornament and for ability just think what we have discussed just now studies serve for delight ornament and for ability delight means you can get delight in private on retiring ornament when you talk something when you speak something when you discuss something when you debate something your language will be different you will be ornamented decorated ability means you are able to manage things in a better way than a man who is not studied than a man who is not educated than a man who does not know the things in a better way so the chief purpose of study what are they delight then what ornament and for ability i think it is clear to you delight ornament and for ability okay yes for expert men can execute for because only the expert can execute things in a better way only experts can execute anybody can do things in a whichever way he likes but execution of things can be done only by experts that is why he said ias ips ifs three wings of administration okay na civil criminal and foreign affairs ias they deal with civil things i mean ips you know police ifs foreign affairs they are experts well educated well trained yes expert men can execute only expert can execute things in a better way yes and perhaps judge of particular they will take into consideration everything related to that not simply doing something all on a sudden no they just of particulars one by one experts only can just things the particulars one by one but the general counsels but the general counsels means advice general advice and the plots and marshaling of affairs come best from those who are learned yes once again i repeat ah uh, general counsels means general advice and the plots and marshaling of affairs means managing of affairs things are managed well very well in the best way possible from those who are learned same idea only those who are learned can manage things in a better way i repeat only those who are learned can manage things in a better way yes marshaling of affairs managing of things arranging things in the proper order systematically methodically it comes it can come only from those who are learned come from best from it comes best the best superlative it can be the best from those that are learned only those who are learned can manage things in a better way okay na that is what studies are for what are the delight then ornament and for ability and he emphatically states that managing of things can be done in a better way only by those who are learned okay then he tells i mean bacon tell some minor disadvantages of studies 
to spend too much time in studies is loath some disadvantage also is there in what way spending too much time in studies is sloth as a lot is sloth means laziness some people will going on reading reading and reading sitting in a room railing reading and learning they are separated from the outside world they don't do their daily act i mean uh, duties etc too much time spending on studies is in a way sloth in a way laziness yes to use them too much for ornament is affectation to use them too much as ornament you can always very often see that now what is that so in some people to make others feel that i am educated i am man of knowledge they will insert some unnecessary words and speak suppose when you speak your mother tongue they will insert some english words into that half english and half telugu okay they will insert that to make it ornamented that is affectation that means please or appease others is it to attract others okay to impress others so pretension to impress others they you pretend okay that you are something great people will laugh at you so what is that once again yes to use them too much for ornament your ornamenting your language your debate your discourse too much it is a affectation it means pretension in order to impress yes so when you use that to ornament your language or your debate or discourse it is in a way affectation so some disadvantages of studies spending too much time on studies is sloth in a way laziness See, you have to do all your duties and perform everything accordingly, but don't spend too much time on studies. You spend enough time, not too much. So when you spend too much time on studies, it becomes laziness. Then using them for ornament unnecessarily is affectation. See, pretension to impress others. You are trying to impress others. by showing your knowledge your i mean ability by using some words or using some language which others will never understand okay now how you observed the speeches of shashi tharoor some words we have never heard of of course he is a great man man of literature of course learned man but he is uh, some words ordinary people can never understand okay now but how you observed the speeches of sudha murthy the great wife of uh, infosys chairman simple language she herself has told once that my language they people feel that it is their own language but people can understand what she says very clearly understand so they would like to hear from sudha murthy than from shashi tharoor both are speaking english of course uh, she is a great man man of learning we can understand universal i mean a citizen work in un etc and all but his language is so powerful agree but uh, people would feel what it is too tough for uh, people to understand whereas sudham would say same thing in a same way but very easy to understand and ideas are very clear see entirely different both of them are both are good speakers compare the you understand the difference yes too much it is being used people feel it is a affectation you are pretending to impress others you are pretending to impress others and for ability also what is there to make judgment holy by their rules according to the rules that you have studied or learned in education to make a judgment holy based on them without considering the practical difficulties your experience and all what is that he is in the humor of a scholar no it is used in a negative sense humor actually means wit okay it is not that good so you cannot judge because next line we see that should combine with experience not make a judgment wholly fully based on your knowledge you cannot make a judgment just based on your i mean uh, knowledge rules might be there for example take the case of an engineer 
the rules are there if he has studied everything but when he, he does something he should consider all the other things too i mean uh, situation will be different from what he has studied or think of a doctor theories are there but uh, for every patient i mean background situation his health condition age all are different theory won't do it theory alone won't do it okay now he must combine with the practical experience yes so make judgment wholly based on them is a humor i mean of a scholar means man of knowledge so now bacon narrates i mean uh, some disadvantages of studies number one spending too much time on studies is sloth sloth means in a way laziness number two i mean uh, using them for ornament too much uh, it is not good okay is a affectation according to him and making judgment wholly by the rules also is not good okay is a humor of a scholar so first he said what is the purpose of study now he says some disadvantages of studies let us continue okay they perfect nature and are perfected by experience they is the perfect your nature studies knowledge education and are perfected by experience only by experience that your knowledge can be perfected yes your knowledge you may have learned a lot of things reading writing learning and many other things but it is perfected by your knowledge is perfected by experience best teacher experience okay na yes so the perfect nature and are perfected by experience for natural abilities are like natural plants your natural abilities are like natural plants they need pruning by study your abilities are to be pruned that means cut and shape you can find a i mean a plant in the garden in front of your house there might be big big trees and they grow according to shape which you want them to grow you cut the branch shape them and it is done according to the plan that you have for them in your mind they are pruned by your knowledge is pruned by your study yes and natural abilities are like a natural plants your abilities are like natural plants they need pruning so any knowledge should be pruned shaped okay by study any knowledge and even your natural ability see some abilities are inborn in a way you get it is it natural abilities and they should be developed i mean improved and shaped by your study i repeat once again for natural abilities are like natural plants a plant or any plant should be pruned cut and shape is pruned by study study can shape reshape improve and i mean uh, you can it can be grown according to okay uh, what is in your in your mind and studies themselves do give forth directions too much at large he study itself can give directions too much at large to a great extent as a okay too much at large except they are bounded in by experience if they are not bounded in by experience see study won't be perfect any knowledge is perfected by your experience you must combine your knowledge with your experience then only your knowledge become perfect or 
completed. Is it clear to you? I repeat once again. A study themselves do give for directions too much at large. Except they are bounded in by XP experience. Crafty men condemn studies. There are people who are crafty, crooked. They would condemn, miscriticize. Simple men admire them. Yes, simple men, ordinary people, they admire them. See, man of knowledge is always respected. The simple men admire them. I mean, studies and those who are studied are, I mean, they are admired by simple people. And wise men use them. See, once again, see all the three. What is that? Eh? Crafty men condemn them. Crooked people might criticize studies. Simple men, what do they do? They admire them. See, a man of knowledge, a man of education, other people will see, look at, I mean, uh, uh, with respect, honor. So, admire them. They are admired by simple people. And wise men, only wise men can use it in a wise way, perfect way, proper way. Wise men use them. Yes. See, once again, all the three. Crafty men condemn them, means criticize them. Simple men admire them and uh, wise men use them for they teach not their own use. Education study, they don't teach their own use, but it is a wisdom without them, above them and one by observation. So knowledge can be acquired by observation. Once again, read that, uh, but there is wisdom without them. See, there are some learning without studies. That is, uh, I mean, achieved by one by observation. Even without study, wisdom can be uh, got. I mean, uh, achieved by one by observation. Even wisdom can be observed by observation. Okay, read not, contradict and confute. The purpose of reading is not to contradict and confute. Me is object to someone. See, I mean, said, contradict to someone. Your purpose is not to contradict someone. When you study something, when you learn something, when you become a man of knowledge, your purpose is not to contradict someone or to confute. Not to believe and take for granted. See, so don't believe everything that you study, that you learn from books, etc. You have to use your uh, intellect and evaluate and judge and come to a conclusion. Yes, believe and take for granted. Not to find talk and discourse, but uh, I mean to weigh and consider. The ultimate purpose is to weigh, means measure, to judge and consider. The same meaning. Your purpose is not to contradict or object someone, contradict someone, but to weigh, to measure, to judge and consider. That should be the purpose of your study. Once you read the line, once again all of you, read not, contradict and confute, not believe and take for granted. Don't believe whatever you read in books and take for granted, means accept whatever you read. Don't take, take whatever you feel. You judge by your intellect. Using your intellect, you can judge it. Yes. Not fine, fine talk and discourse. It is not just to debate and discuss, but to weigh and consider in order to weigh, judge and consider. So, some books are to be tasted. There are many books some are to be tasted, others to be swallowed, and some few to be chewed and digested. See, when you read a book, even there is a development in the method of reading. See, for example, a child of a 12, 13, uh, I mean, uh, a boy, what kind of books he would like? Maybe comics. Maybe short stories. Is it not so? So there is a growth in the method of his reading. Slowly he would 
like a better 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 slowly 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 he will grow in his mind and he would start reading these kinds of essays and all only at the latest stage when his knowledge is perfected there is some growth in the development the, some development in the method of reading also see if suppose a, a great uh, i mean literary book is given to a boy he would understand nothing is it not so so there is some, some see i have read i mean uh, bacon telling in some other uh, essays another essay he says a great book grows exactly according to the growth of the reader's mind that means when he reads a second time he gets more knowledge but he reads third time he gets uh, some other things other than what he read in the first two times reading a great book grows exactly according to the growth of the reader's mind his mind would be growing the book will be growing in the sense that uh, he gets a better knowledge when he reads second time third time or more than that yes so some books are to be simply tasted books also several kinds of books are there just for tasting some books uh, swallowed just read full without thinking of uh, too much on that spending too much time on that uh, there are some few to be chewed and digested very slowly read slowly think about what you are reading and uh, digest them so great works are there we should be slowly read understood see read once again chewed and uh, digest many kinds of books are there so when you read some books some are to be simply tasted and some are to be swallowed that means much ideas won't be there just to get a, a gist of it summary of it that's all that's enough for them enough for anyone whereas some books are to be read very slowly it should be understood slowly think about it okay na uh, how should it be or those books should be read some few to be chewed and digested can i now take that can i now take that that means uh, so the context uh, explain the meaning etc uh, some books are to be uh, tasted just tasting some others to be swallowed and some few books are there to be chewed and digested some more ideas are there by francis bacon we will see that in the next video read remember the last line once again some books are to be tasted some swallowed some to be what what chewed and digest we'll see in the next video thank you